And a very good morning to you. It is Rima Brecky, and of course, it is that time of the month. Our very special guest, our resident medico, Dr. Clara Chu, is in with us this morning. And we have a huge topic this morning to uh, to discuss, and that is the topic of melanoma. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, good morning to you, Clara. How are you doing? Yeah, doing pretty well. Thanks. Thanks for having me in the studio again. No problem at all. It's a great pleasure. So look, this is the topic we're on today, melanoma. So let's start by, I guess, giving uh, getting a definition. What is melanoma? Yeah, so in our skin, we have these skin cells called melanocytes, and they are specialized cells that produce the protective skin darkening pigment called melanin. Now, melanoma is a type of skin cancer that develops in these particular cells. So they usually occur on parts of the body that have been overexposed to the sun, um, but rarely, melanomas can also um, happen inside the eye or in other parts of the skin or body that generally don't get exposed to the sun, such as like the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet, or even under your nails. Yeah. So how prevalent is it in Australia? Um, Australia has the highest melanoma rates in the world. So it's the third most common cancer in Australia, and it's often referred to as Australia's national cancer. And so... I'll give you some stats from Melanoma Institute Australia, which is like the leading organization that um, takes care of patients who have melanoma and are doing melanoma research. So um, according to them, it's expected that 16,800 Australians will be diagnosed with melanoma this year. This is equivalent to one Australian being diagnosed with melanoma every 30 minutes. Um, it's also estimated that 1,300 Australians will die from melanoma this year. So that equates to one Australian dying from melanoma every six hours. Um, so, yeah, those are, you know, quite stark. And mm -hmm. then, you know, in terms of ages, um, it's the second most, uh, sorry, it's the most common cancer for Australians aged 20 to 39. And it's the second most common cancer in Australian men after prostate cancer. And the third most common cancer in Australian women after breast and colorectal cancer. Now, what we do know is that 95% of melanomas are caused by overexposure to UV radiation from the sun. And that if we can find these melanomas early, 90% of them can be cured by surgery. Yeah, that, and there's some fairly startling facts in there for sure. Now, what uh, you've already mentioned one thing there in particular, but what increases the risk of developing a melanoma? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, melanoma risk increases with exposure to UV radiation from the sun. Um, but you can also get UV radiation from other sources like solariums. And in particular, any episodes of sunburn, um, you know, during childhood, in, you know, especially, um, can put people at increased risk. So, you know, the there's a bunch of other um, things that, you know, people should be aware of that puts them at increased risk of melanoma. So, um, you know, having a history of childhood tanning and sunburn, um, having a pattern of short, intense periods of UV exposure to, uh, of, sorry, intense exposure to UV radiation, um, having a lot of moles. So if you've got more than 50 on your body and more than 10 above the elbows on the arms, that's a risk factor and increased number of unusual looking moles. So, you know, sometimes for um, for our average um, listener, you know, it might be a bit difficult to tell the difference between the two, um, but that's where it's important to go and um, see your GP about it. Sometimes um, people with depressed immune systems, a family history of melanoma in a first degree um, relative, having fair skin or a tendency to burn rather than tan, um, having freckles, light coloured eyes, like blue or green eyes or light or red coloured hair also put you at risk. Um, and then, of course, anyone who's actually previously had a melanoma or a non-melanoma skin cancer are also at increased risk of developing a melanoma. Helpfully, the Melanoma Institute um, has actually developed a risk prediction tool. And so that can predict a person's risk of developing a first degree, uh, sorry, a first primary invasive melanoma. Um, so it's a simple online tool and it only takes a couple of minutes to calculate your risk of developing a melanoma. Um, and so, yeah, if our listeners are interested, the website for this, um, for this tool is um, www.melanomarisk.org.au. And yeah, it'd be worth well worth um, your time to yeah pay a visit and just have a quick look. Yep, absolutely. It's a, it's a very very important thing to do for sure, particularly if you've got some of those uh, some of those risk factors there. Now, is it possible to prevent melanoma? 
Yeah, absolutely. So given that overexposure to UV light causes 95% of melanomas, the best way to prevent melanoma um, is to protect your skin from the sun. And so there are five sun safe rules, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners already know, but let's go through them anyway. So the first one is to seek shade. So especially in the hottest part of the day when UV levels are the most intense. Um, the second is to wear sun protective clothing that covers your, um, your back, your shoulders, your arms and your legs. The third is to wear a broad brimmed hat because a brim would protect your ears and your neck more than a cap would. Um, the fourth is to wear wraparound sunglasses and um, definitely check the label to make sure that they meet the Australian standard, um, which would be category two, three or four. Um, and then the fifth one is to apply broad spectrum sunscreen with an SPF of at least 50 plus every two hours um, and after swimming or exercise. And um, a word on solarium. Um, can I urge our listeners to please avoid using solariums? Um, there is actually no safe way to tan. And in fact, a tan is your skin sending an SOS to the rest of your body. So science tells us that a tan is skin cells in trauma. And it's the result of sun damaged cells producing that pigment melanin in an attempt to protect themselves from further UV damage. So that's your body in self-preservation mode. Um, and it's actually not a good thing. So um, please avoid tanning and definitely avoid you, um, sunburning. Yeah, it's probably one of the best things they've done was to uh, get rid of a lot of solariums. And, and thankfully, some mm. some uh, some research has been done into just how harmful those things have been to so many people over the years. It's, it's quite crazy. Yeah. Now, what are some of Absolutely. the signs and symptoms that we can look out for? Yeah, so look, melanoma may have no symptoms at all. So the first sign of a melanoma is often the appearance of a new spot or a change in an existing freckle or mole. Now, remember that melanomas aren't always black. They can also be brown, pink, skin colored, or combination of different shades. So it's important to know the skin that you're in. Mm -hmm. So in other words, know your own skin um, and get medical advice if you notice anything new or anything that's changed on your skin. Um, so uh, the Melanoma Institute has uh, on their website the ABCDE guidelines, which is a really useful way to help people monitor their own skin. So um, if you notice any of the following, definitely go and seek medical help. So A is for asymmetry. So a half, um, when one half of a mole or birthmark doesn't match the other. B is for border irregularity. So that's when the edges are irregular, ragged, notched or blurred. Um, C is for color variation. So when the color doesn't look the same or over, but may have different shades of brown or black, sometimes even patches of red or white or blue. D is for diameter. So if the diameter is larger than six millimeter, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, um, or if it's getting bigger, then that's also something of concern. And E is for evolving. So what that means is it's changing in size, shape or color or whether it's um, used to be flat, but it's now raised um, or if there's like other different things going on with it, like itching, bleeding or crusting. Mm -hmm. um, so they're all pretty strong signs of, you know, strong warning signs. Um, that it could be a melanoma. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, we want to look for melanoma in unusual places as well. So that could be dark areas under the nails, um, on the membranes lining of the mouth or the vagina, um, yeah, or other private areas. And so, you know, new moles and spots will appear and change during childhood and adolescence usually, um, and also during pregnancy. So this can be normal, but any adults who develop new spots or moles um, should definitely have them checked by their doctor. Yeah, some great advice there for sure. We'll take a quick break. We've, uh, we're joined by our resident medico, Dr. Clara Chu, talking about melanoma. We'll be right back after this. And a very good morning. Welcome back. We are joined by our resident medico, Dr. Clara Chu, is in the uh, studio this morning with us, and we're talking about a massive, massive topic here, melanoma. Now, uh, Clara, how is melanoma diagnosed? Yeah, so if you have any concerns about your skin, uh, you should visit your GP, a skin cancer clinic. There's plenty on the coast here, or a dermatologist, a bit harder to find on the coast. Yeah. Um, 
They will do a full skin check using a handheld magnifying instrument. We call that a dermatoscope. And then they will consider whether you have any skin lesions that need a biopsy. So if the doctor suspects that a spot on your skin could be a melanoma, um, we can do a thing called an excision biopsy and we basically remove the whole spot for you mm -hmm. um, depending on the size. And then this will be, the sample will get um, sent to a lab and then it'll be looked at under the microscope by a specialist to see if there are any cancer cells. Yeah. Yep. Now, if you do happen to have a positive diagnosis, um, what should you do? So your doctor may refer you to a melanoma specialist, um, like the ones at Melanoma Institute Australia. So they're all melanoma surgeons mm -hmm. um, or oncolo you know, melanoma oncologists. So, sure. they, you know, they, they really know what they're doing. And they're, um, they're located in Wollstonecraft in Sydney. Um, and they only deal with melanomas and they can provide personalized expert advice um, and follow up that is specific for each person's situation. Yeah, great. Now, what sort of treatments are currently available? Yeah, so if someone's diagnosed with early stage melanoma, then surgery or what we call wide local excision um, can, you know, uh, be cured. Mm -hmm. um, and it requires that the melanoma be removed as well as some of the more normal looking skin around the melanoma. Yep. So usually five to 10 millimeters um, is the rough margin that we would um, do for that. And many people with early mel melanoma don't need to have like lymph nodes removed or anything like that. But in some cases, um, they may do a lymph node biopsy and you know that's just to check and make sure that um, if the melanoma was to spread, that that mm -hmm. would be the first lymph node that it would have gone to. Now, if there's a risk that the melanoma could come back, then you may be offered additional treatment. So this can include things like immunotherapy and targeted therapy. Um, and so that just depends on obviously a case sure. by case um, basis. Now for patients with more advanced melanoma, where the cancer has spread to lymph nodes, other internal organs, your bones, um, that may include then surgery, radiation therapy, targeted therapy or immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, or any combination of those. Yep. So obviously surgery um, can be used to treat metastatic, met uh, start again, um, surgery can be used to treat metastatic melanoma um, that involves other parts of the skin. Um, and so surgery is also still possible if it's spread to other organs in the body, um, but obviously it just depends on where it is. Um, we can also provide radiation therapy for people and that can be useful in some forms of melanoma. And then there's also targeted drug therapy. And so that attacks sp specific genetic changes mm -hmm. that allows the melanoma to grow and spread, um, you know, while minimizing the harms to the healthy cells. Sure. So essentially all we're doing is just targeting the melanomas yep. um, without killing off everything else. So that's quite common for melanomas that have spread to other organs or if it has come back after some initial, initial treatment. And then finally, one of the newer things um, available is immunotherapy. So um, that's basically using drugs to stimulate the body's immune system um, and get the immune system to recognize and fight the melanoma cancer cells. And so there's currently three immunotherapy drugs that are approved um, for treatment of advanced melanoma in Australia. Yeah, it's definitely has, it's come a long way, hasn't it, over the mm, years, the yeah, treatment of melanoma. Sure. It's quite amazing, particularly with the things like immunotherapy. I mean, that, that is just a whole other field of medicine being opened up there, which is quite, uh, quite incredible. Now, what is the, uh, the prognosis of those affected with melanoma? So it's not possible for doctors to predict the exact course of a disease or yeah. even how people will respond to treatment. So an individual's prognosis will depend on the type and stage of the cancer, as well as um, the person's age, their general health at the time of diagnosis. What we do know is that a melanoma can be most effectively treated in its early stages while it's still confined to the top layer of the skin. And certainly, as you said, like with um, immunotherapy kind of, you know, coming on and mm -hmm. um, and it being used quite widely now, um, the survival rates of even sort of advanced metastatic melanoma has changed quite significantly. Sure. Yeah. So where can you find some support if you have been diagnosed? Yeah, so I've mentioned Melanoma Institute Australia a number of times. Um, they are the leading experts in melanoma in this country. And so they have a web website that's full of um, patient support information. So that includes um, patient support fact sheets, information on accessing clinical psychology services um, and melanoma nurses. They have support services directory and also patient support groups. So um, 
the in Melanoma Institute has actually partnered with Melanoma Patients Australia to support melanoma patients and their carers around Australia. They hold support meetings um, monthly around Australia and they include face-to-face -face group meetings, um, online Zoom meetings, as well as a hybrid combination of the two. Um, and then in addition, the people who are assisting with this service, they're called support leaders, they keep in contact with the patients and carers individually to make sure that everyone's well looked after. Yeah, it's probably the most important thing, isn't it, having the support around you, particularly if you are going on a journey of, of you know, melanoma, having the treatments and different things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Super important. Yeah. As always, Clara, thank you so much for coming in this morning and sharing, again, a massive, massive topic. You'll be able to check it out on the uh, rima.cc podcast page a little bit later on as well. Stay with us. This is Rima Brecky. We'll be right back after this.